Hello and welcome everybody to our Gold Perinatal Online Conference for 2014. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, Public Relations Coordinator of Gold Perinatal, and today I am so fortunate to be sitting with Rebecca Decker. And we're going to be chatting with her a little bit about her up and coming presentation at our Gold Perinatal Conference. And it's titled Vitamin K for Newborns Myth versus Facts. Welcome, Rebecca. It's so great to have you here with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. Well, I have some questions for you. I'm um, I'm just smiling with glee because I'm so excited to be, um, you know, hearing from you. And I know there'll be many um, healthcare providers that are going to be tuning in um, to hear about what you have to say about vitamin K. So my first question for you is, what do you think the biggest challenge for families today um, in choosing to use vitamin K or not? Well, I really think the biggest challenge is that families today want to be really engaged in their health care decisions. And there's just been so much misinformation about vitamin K that it's hard to really make um, an informed decision. And the, you know, the problem with wanting to be engaged is that you can make decisions, but you can also make them on inaccurate information. So just making sure that there's accurate information out there is really key. And a lot of families rely on what we call Dr. Google. And um, we, you know, if you Google vitamin K, a whole slew of articles will pop up, and many of them are just riddled with myths and not facts. Well, I have to agree there. Um, working as a doula with my clients, I know that uh, often they're presenting me with information and I can't even respond to it. They've got all sort, a whole slew of, you know, printed out documents. They put them in front of me and I'm like, ah, you know. So often I actually will refer, refer back to your website. I certainly appreciate all the research that you've put into it. So next up on my question list I have for you, um, do you think that we actually have enough information today to be making an informed decision about choosing vitamin K? You know, there's this misperception, even among some healthcare providers, that vitamin K has not been well studied. Um, I was talking with a physician about that shortly before my article came out, and she said, well, I'm, I was under the impression that there really hasn't been any research, enough research on this. And what I think people don't realize is that there actually is about 80 years worth of research on giving vitamin K to newborns. Um, just some of it happened so long ago that we kind of forgotten that it existed. Um, and a lot of countries around the world are do a great job of tracking um, vitamin K administration to newborns and you know what happens to those infants in terms of do they bleed or not later. Um, and the US does not do that kind of tracking, but other countries do. So, we are missing some information on certain aspects of vitamin K, but on other aspects, we do know a lot. Wow. Well, I just learned something new, too. And I'm, you know, I'm surprised. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be surprised about that 80-year marker, that there is quite a lot of research in the background. Um, and I did know a little bit about the countries. You know, I know just from other you know, things in, you know, in birth facts that some countries don't collect the information. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that you would love it if we saw more of that collecting in, in sort of the North America, U.S. space as well. Yeah, that would definitely, you know, give us some information because I'm sure many people have heard about the outbreak of bleeding in Tennessee that happened a few years ago. And people were like really concerned, like, like why all of a sudden are all these babies bleeding? And to be honest, we don't know how many babies have bleeds because nobody tracks that. So it just, you know, may be that, you know, this one pediatrician just kind of put two and two together and realized that this was happening. So, um, yeah, we, we really need better tracking systems for um, vitamin K and vitamin K deficiency bleeds. Yeah, and I can see that if it if we get more tracking in uh, in North America, it probably well, I mean, it will give us better results, and then um, and then some actual factual outcomes, and again, that would build on the confidence that we need. Because I'm sensing this really sometimes there's a lack of confidence, you know, um, in the information, and so it becomes again skewed. You know, the information becomes skewed. Would you agree with that? I think so. Um... I think it's really interesting. A lot of people don't realize that um, babies have a lot more problems with vitamin K deficiency bleedings in Asia. 
such as oh. in Thailand and Japan, um, but they very carefully document the rates um, as they do in the Netherlands and Denmark and the United Kingdom. Um, and we know that rates in Europe are much lower, but we really have no idea in North America what the rates of vitamin K deficiency bleeding are. So, you know, parents, you know, may not perceive it to be a problem because nobody really reports it. Right, I understand. So what are you hoping that we can all learn from this presentation and that we can take away? I hope people will have kind of a grasp of the history of the use of vitamin K and the research that we have on this treatment for newborns. Um, I also, you know, really hope people understand the differences of the types of bleeding that can happen if there's a vitamin K deficiency, um, the risk factors for bleeding, and, you know, what are the options, you know, versus the injection versus the oral vitamin K. Um, and just to really understand the pros and cons of each option. And finally, my biggest thing, though, is really for people to be able to dispel the facts, to walk away from this really knowing and having a gra good, strong grasp of the facts about vitamin K so that they can recognize myths when they see them and, you know, kind of counter those myths with what we know um, is based on best evidence. Well, that's excellent. Well, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to, as you, you know, dispelling a lot of these um, myths and facts so that we can get that accurate information to our families. So, Rebecca, it has been a delight um, sitting down with you today and chatting with you about this important topic. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing the, um, the outcomes and how people use this information in their working lives, too. So thank you again for being with us today. Again, I'm Fiona Lang-Sharp, and I've been sitting with Dr. Re uh, Rebecca Decker. Thank you very much.